and uh, my teammate Loris, who's uh, he's you know, a he's his own, he's his own. Come with the guys, like it was, it was a good experience and stuff. Well, first of all, thanks for coming by, dude. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me, bro. It's this is sick. Like the facility you got, like the whole team and everything you got, it's yeah. it's badass. So thanks, it's really man. cool to see it. I appreciate it. Um, so a lot of people on the channel probably don't know who you are. So tell us who you are. Yeah, so Garrett Gerloff, uh, I race World Superbikes for the BMW Bonovo team. I've been doing like World Championship racing since 2020. Um, and basically I'm just a guy that's from Houston, Texas boy, yeah. and I love two wheels, man. Whether it's got a motor or not, I'm just, uh, I'm all about two wheels. So that's, awesome. pretty, that's pretty much uh, the best summary I can do. <laughs> so you're without a doubt the fastest dude that's ever been here at this facility, <laughs> World Superbike level rider. Um, I guess sure? I guess we'll start. Uh, Jake's a broad dude. That's true, yes. <laughs> Guys, he watches, he watches the channel. I do watch the channel, bro. I'm a subscriber. <laughs> I've probably a couple years now at least, yeah. For Jigsaw Bro? No, no, for you. Oh, no, me. no, okay. no. I'm okay. I'm loyal, man. Yeah. Oh, I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> it was it was funny because you I don't remember who reached out to who. We've been talking on Instagram for a little bit. We've been trying to get something going, but yeah, like I obviously knew who you were from racing and then like somehow we got connected. And yeah. Like, yeah, I watched the channel. I was like, that's crazy. So yeah, like the point of this whole video guys is go, go follow Garrett. He's doing a lot of stuff on YouTube. Um, <laughs> you're making a lot of stuff and I, I just want people to see cause like you're putting out cool stuff, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. the whole YouTube thing is like, I've always been a fan of YouTube. Like, I feel like you can learn so much online. There's so many awesome creators that put out just like so much cool content, whether you're trying to learn something or whether you're just trying to be entertained. Like, I think it's just such a cool platform. And I wanted, I've, I've been wanting to make my mark, I guess, like for a while in this space. And this year, like going from Yamaha in the last few years to, to BMW, I was like, all right, it might be kind of a, like a cool story. At least it's like, mm -hmm. um, uh, starting point to start putting videos out and stuff so yeah so yeah I've been working with uh, with a friend of mine Brad who's doing the videos and whatnot and I think he's doing like a, a pretty damn good job and yeah it's been a it's yeah it's been a cool experience but there's definitely some some weird parts about it like putting yourself out there to a bunch of strangers online is yeah. kind of kind of weird but like I've gotten a lot of support from it and yeah it's just it's just different I'm, you know about it you know yeah <laughs> I think for you it's cool because you're you're really putting yourself out there you're putting Putting Gary Gerloff, the guy out there. Like a lot of people don't realize, but like for me, like it's not that I'm kind of sociopathic and like I made a character, <laughs> but like it's it's amped up, and you've seen it, right? Like the cameras go on, and it's like yo, you know, like you know, big energy. Yeah. And in real life, I'm a little more normal. But how does it feel, like yeah, putting yourself out there, like trying to grow this and trying to trying to make content, I guess. Yeah. It's I mean, it's at least I have something to talk about because most of the videos that I'm doing are around the races and stuff, yeah. so it's like pretty simple. And Brad has been doing an awesome job about, uh, you know, I, I don't want the channel to be just about me. You know, I mean, I guess I might be the the name on the channel and I might be the main person, but I mean, dude, I, I kind of wanted to use it as like a way to highlight all the the people in my life and like all the ways that they contribute to like me being where I'm at and, and, and being able to do what I do. And so Brad's been doing an awesome job of, of like covering the whole team, you know, and like getting their personalities to uh, like come through on camera. And, and uh, my teammate Loris, who's, uh, you know, he's his, own, he's his own character and stuff. Um, and then like my family came and, you know, having them on camera and stuff like it's, it's cool. And I guess one of the reasons why I wanted to do YouTube in the first place is because like if nothing else, it's gonna be cool videos that I can show my kids one day. You know, it's like just like trying to just capture the moments and being able to uh, to hold them there on YouTube until I can show them to you know whoever my my kids in the future stuff like that. Like yeah. that was kind of the main idea behind it. But um, yeah, I, I see what you're saying. Like. I want the videos to be entertaining. I want people to want to watch them. So there is a bit of like, I, there is a bit of upping me a little bit, just yeah. uh, slightly, not not like a whole lot, but um, at least like when it's me and Les, my crew chief and like the team and stuff, we really are like that all the time. We're always like poking at each other. We're always like, you know, just yeah. just trying to get under each other's skins and stuff, but in, in a fun way. Uh -huh. And dude just keeps like the, it keeps the whole environment just super, super fun, like yeah. at the races and stuff. What's, um, talk to me a little bit about like, you know, kind of how it is filming the behind the scenes at the Bonovo BMW squad. Like obviously there's stuff you can't show, there's stuff you yeah. can show. So like, and you're balancing trying to do a job while you're there, you know, like you're For paid sure. to ride the motorcycle. 
we were talking about it on the phone yesterday. We were like, yeah, like, you know, like I don't want to be distracted making content, but like I'm there to like ride the bike. So like, is that difficult? Yeah, that's one of the reasons why I wanted Brad to, to be with me and do all the video and all the editing and stuff, because for sure my job is 100% to be on the bike and go as fast as I can. And I want everybody to know that that's also my, that's my focus. Uh -huh. And so it's cool that I can outsource the, the content side of it to, to yeah. Brad who's doing a good job. And, and that keeps me focused on what I need to focus on and he can, he can do that other stuff. So, um, but I mean, there's a couple things where it's like, all right, I need to, I need to say this for the video, but at least like it's, we can put that in different times of the day where it's not like going to be a hassle or yeah. anything like that. And, and, uh, man, they're starting to do pranks and stuff on camera. So like, I don't know if you saw the last one, but, uh, Eugene Laverty, uh, ex pro racer uh -huh. decided to shave off his beard and pretend to be like an Italian fan, like out there and, <laughs> and dude, it caught me so off guard. I was stuttering, dude. I didn't, didn't even know, like, like when I finally realized it was him, I was just so caught off guard. Like what the heck just happened and stuff. So uh, it's I, yeah, bro, it's a, it's a good time. And I was going to say also like doing the videos, it, it also puts a different side of or it gives a different angle for the racing stuff because it's yeah. like it's almost like no matter what happens during the weekend it's gonna make for a good video so it kind of like has changed my perspective of like all right the weekend might be going kind of shitty like it might not be like the best weekend or, or whatnot but like at least it's gonna be good content for and just like being able to think like that it's it's kind of like kept me in an overall more positive mindset yeah because like before you suffer in silence dude like you're just there right. your things aren't going your way like dude what the hell am i doing I, I can't do anything right nothing's coming together and there's like almost no reason there, there's a reason for it but at least if it's on camera there's like almost more reason than yeah do you know what i'm saying for like sure. kind of hard yeah. to explain but yeah no anyway. i totally get it. i mean I've, I've definitely had situations like we're talking about jigsaw bra he came and blew up the turbo hayabusa yeah. right and like <laughs> You know, if, if I didn't have to, the ability to make a video and have fun with it, yeah, it would just be like, like you said, suffering yeah, in silence. Yeah, this, this just like, sucks, man. This yeah. sucks. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. So um, you've been riding at the world level for like three years now. Um, you came from the kind of Moto America, AMA kind of pipeline a little bit. Um, I wanted you to tell a story of how you went to World Superbike because I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So I've been, I've been with Yamaha for a long, or I had been with Yamaha for a long time, like 11 years yeah. in Moto America and AMA. But I knew that like, man, I really wanted to go try to push myself in a world championship. Like I was having fun in, in America and stuff and I was having decent results. But like for me, I just really wanted to see like, where could I take this? Like how far could I actually go? And so I started putting feelers out there. I started trying to push for it more on Yamaha USA's side. Like, hey, I'm really liking being here, but I would really love the opportunity to go to Europe and try to try to you know do something over there. And they were super gracious and um, put me in contact with Yamaha Europe and Andrea Dossoli, who was the the racing director at the time and still is. Mm -hmm. And but I guess before all of that. I had been struggling so much to win a race. Like I had one of the best bikes on the grid. I was teammates with Cameron Bobier, five-time champion. So like I had everything that I needed, but I was just struggling to get past the podium to, to the actual win. I was racing against like Tony Elias, uh, ex MotoGP rider mm -hmm. uh, and Cameron. And uh, yeah, I finally was able to put it together in Laguna Seca. And it was just the biggest, just weight off my shoulders, man. Like yeah. it, it was so, like I get goosebumps thinking about it right now because it's just it was such a cool moment of like finally like tr like triumph you know it was such a cool win yeah and and like I was psychopathic after the I was so amped up like dude <laughs> I couldn't even like control what I was doing so I was like got off the bike was like you know with the fans and stuff like come on let's freaking go yeah I was giving people high fives and whatnot and ended up riding back to the pits no helmet on like come on just screaming at the top of my lungs yeah. and everybody's like dude who, what the, who is this guy you know um but i guess all the world superbike guys were there because they were going to race right? yeah exactly yeah. so the world superbike the world superbike teams and stuff were there and not all of them but like a lot of them ended up watching the last superbike race for for moto america and so they, they like a lot of people saw me being a psycho and stuff and after i won i knew that it was my opportunity to introduce myself to the yamaha europe guys because i finally had that win to be like hey i can't actually ride a bike halfway decent like could you guys maybe consider me for you know a, a future position at, at yamaha world superbike you know and so i went over there met with andrea met with some of the guys and uh nothing came you know i wasn't expecting anything but it was just like hey nice to meet you guys and everything later on in the year 
I was just pushing, pushing, like, please, Yamaha USA, can I, can I have, um, can we set up a meeting in France so that I can go to one of the World Superbike races and talk with these guys and just try to make a pitch of, like, just give me an opportunity, basically. I was going over there, like, on my knees, begging, like, please just give me an opportunity. I go over to France, it's kind of a crazy weekend and it looks like nothing's gonna happen. And then Andrea, the racing director was like, we might be able to make something happen. And I ended up leaving that weekend with a contract. But the, the one takeaway from that was, Andrea said, I like you because I remember that first race when you had at Laguna Seca. I remember how amped you were and how much you were celebrating and like your energy. I, I could see how passionate you were about racing. and." we're gonna take a chance on you basically because of that. Yeah. And um, so it was just like, it was crazy to hear that and it just makes me think like, man, you know, um, all the little things that we do in life, you never know how other people are gonna to react to it and, and uh, you know, just, it's crazy how, how different things you do in life can steer your path. Yeah. Basically. Because so. imagine if, if you had never won that race, maybe they wouldn't have remembered you and exactly. maybe it would have been harder to get that opportunity. Yeah, because yeah. Because then like, after that point where you started in World Superbike, um, things like, I don't know, like there was, it was like a rocket ship trajectory for you for a while. It was like really cool to see. Well, you know? we, do, like, we started in the basement. We started like a base level though. Like it did not no, start for, very no, good. for sure. But I just remember in 2020, you, you got some podiums and I was like, oh shit, like he's getting podiums. And then um, it was in 21 where I want you to tell the story where like, you got a chance to ride a freaking GP bike, not once, but yeah. twice, right? Like, yeah, it was, it I mean, was crazy. It was crazy. And like t 2020 was COVID and stuff. So yeah. it was just, uh, like I told you earlier, I got a job because I didn't think yeah, racing didn't was going to even happen, yeah. you know? And like you said, bottom of the basement, you're just like, what, what were you doing again? You were I was working? working at a car, like repair shop, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I had fun, dude. I had fun with the guys. Like it was, it was a good experience and stuff, yeah. but, uh, then racing did start up again. And yeah, it was, it was so weird though. Cause I was in Europe and Europe was super strict about all the lockdown stuff sure. and about having all your paperwork and everything. So my like kind of first experience of Europe is just this insane, like everybody's wondering who you are, where you're going, why Yeah, there was that vibe. And, and then like every time I got to the races, there was no fans. Uh, it was just the teams. It was like, I had gone back in time to we were racing, you know, yeah. amateur racing, yeah, yeah. but we're at a world championship and it was just super weird. But yeah, I started off, I think my first race, I finished like 17th out of 18 guys. So not the best, uh, but then, yeah, like I just, just try to keep learning. And I was with an awesome team and I had an awesome crew chief that like really, uh, like I, I had fun with and he believed in me. And like, that was, that was really all I needed was just somebody to like, you know, even when things weren't going well, just like, dude, you got this, like, come on. I know yeah. you're a good rider. Let's, let's go. And we ended up finishing the year with, uh, with podiums and stuff. And it was just like, well, actually I finished up 2020 riding Valentino Rossi's bike, that's, that's which was, it, yeah. which was insane. So it was like, we start off the year pandemic and finishing 17th out of 18 guys to finishing the year with podiums and riding the best rider in the world's bike and yeah. with his team and everything was like, dude, what? Whoa, slow down, bro. <laughs> hey, slow down. Uh, so that was, that was super insane. Um, but yeah, yeah you, what, you want me to tell you, tell a story? About I wanted, yeah. I wonder the story, like, how did that even come up? Like, how did you, dude, beats me, that, man. Is, that is the craziest <laughs> thing, man. Like for sure. That was like, it was only because of COVID that, that I got to ride Valentino's Rossi's bike. So it's like just weird. It's like a, a small sliver of a silver lining and something that was not good, but, you know, for sure. Like, yeah. let me be clear about yeah, that. Yeah, COVID is awful. But, yeah. uh, but he tested positive for COVID. And mm. because of that, they were always testing before the races. And like, if you didn't test negative, you couldn't actually yeah. ride the bike or go, to, go show up at the track. He tested positive. Yamaha was in a scramble like all right well we need to because contractually they have to have two guys on the grid if it's uh if it's outside of seven days or something but before the weekend mm. so it was like 10 days to, 10 days out so they had to find somebody so because cause under contract they have to have two guys on the on the grid and so there was a list of like four guys before me. Like I, I was, I don't even know where I was on the list, but they had like Top Rack, they had uh, Cal Crutchlow, they had, right, or, the they, had rider, yeah. they had Jorge Lorenzo at the time, they had uh, Koda Nozane, who was a Japanese, Japanese rider, guy, yeah. um, and they had, dude, who else did they have? There was a list of people, and one by one, they couldn't go. 
couldn't do it. Couldn't do it for whatever reason. Uh, Coda couldn't come from Japan because of the, the quarantine the requirements. Mm-hmm. Cal Crutchlow was in a different part of the country, also couldn't come fly in. Jorge Lorenzo, I guess they decided not to use him. I don't, <laughs> I don't really know what happened there. Top Rack had a sponsor issue with yeah. Red Bull and Monster um, and just like ended up at me. And I, and you know, like, I, who knows? Yeah, oh yeah, there. I was like, hell yeah! But at the same time, I was thinking, like, do they even know who I am? You know, yeah. like in, in a way. I love thinking about it as Valentino is just like he's like sick with COVID, and he gets on the phone. He's like, get me Garrett Girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I, I, but like, how crazy of a situation is that? Like, it was crazy. I remember completely when it happened, crazy. I was like, no, I was like, are you kidding me? Like, that's crazy. Like, I can't believe he's there. Um, yeah. I, there's, there was a. I think during practice, one of the scenes that I loved was like. It was like his box and like all his stuff Dude. and all his people, but you're there. And I was like, this feels like they photoshopped you in, you know? It was yes, so crazy. Yes, and I was shaking, dude. I was I so, bet. I was terrified. It's it's his crew, the guys that I've seen work with Valentino yeah. his whole career. Like, uh, I know Uchi, all their faces all guys, and stuff. Right? Yeah. Exactly. And, uh, you know, his dogs are on the back of the bike. Yeah. Uh, it's a big 46 on the wall. <laughs> And I'm, I'm in You're there like, and, and like on the internet and stuff, like, cause they announced on Wednesday, I think that I was going to be riding for the weekend. Yeah. And on the internet, everybody's like, who the hell is this? Like <laughs> what? You don't like, everybody was so pissed off. Cause they were like, we want top rack. We want Jorge. Right. We want, you know, like everybody. And they got stuck with me. And, uh, and then like, it ended up being a good Friday. Like I had a decent, a decent Friday. It wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. And I ended up like getting up to fifth place at one point in practice, and uh, that was like the, like one of the highlights of my life. That's dude. I was, pretty crazy. I, I came dude. across the cr- across the line, and they had Valentino's pit board, and it said you know P5. Yeah. And I was like, bro, what? What is <laughs> like? What is happening? And and so that was like one of the highlights. But then after that session, I, I finished like 16th. I didn't finish in fifth, oh, but okay. everybody remembers fifth because everybody was freaking out, I guess. And so then after that, everybody's like, "We want girl off on the bike. We want girl off on the bike." And I was like, "Damn, what a what a shift, you know, from yeah. like the beginning of the weekend to the end." And because uh, then yeah, uh, Valley tested negative, and then he was able to ride the bike. Right? Yeah, so that was yeah. a bummer. I came in after. I mean, it was good for him for sure. Yeah. But like, I came in after FP2, and I come to the box, and everybody was happy, and they were like clapping for me and stuff and that was like sweet and one of the people clapping for me was Valentino and I was thinking like oh dude like that's Valentino no way what the heck and then it clicked I was like oh what's he doing here like <laughs> yeah, oh like, wait, wait, wait a second <laughs> yeah I know he's not supposed to be here and so then I knew immediately like he had tested negative and was able to come in and, and oh, race man. and I thought in the rules that whoever starts the weekend has, has to finish to, the weekend right. but He's this is Valentino he's Rossi, Rossi man. Like yeah. he, he owns the sport, basically. So there's no, um, there's no rule for him. So yeah, but you know, it is what it is. Oh, yeah. and his bike blew up in the race that weekend. His really? bike blew up, and the, and uh, everybody online was blaming me for blowing for like messing up the bike for him and stuff. So yeah, it's just a whirlwind, man. <laughs> yeah. So that wasn't your only time you rode a GP bike. Later in 2021, you got the chance to actually race one. Yeah. Aston. Yeah, I got to race one, and that was uh, dude, that was a crazy weekend. So both the times I got to ride a GP bike. I went to tracks that I had never been to before. So Valencia, yeah. I had never been there. I show up on a GP bike. Whoa, what's happening? Same thing, I go to Assen. Assen's a, a, like a pretty crazy track, super fast track. And yeah. the same thing, I, I didn't know where I was going. I'm trying to learn the so track. Like, just real quick question. Superbike goes to Assen, no? For sure. I hadn't gone there yet, though. Oh, so like in 2020, there. we were supposed to go to Assen, but they canceled it for COVID. Oh, okay. so, so like when we showed up in 21, yeah. I had never been there. That makes sense. So. Yeah, it, I ended up learning the track pretty fast, but the bike ended up being a lot different from, from Valentino's bike I rode the year before. It was the 2019 that I rode at uh, Assen, and I rode the 2020 bike the year before. And there was uh, like, dude, I had the worst stability issues of my entire life, especially really? through the fast corners at Assen. The bike was violent. Like, Whoa. I mean, just give, give me the worst tank slap, the worst head shake I've ever experienced in my entire life, like terrified, you know? And through the, through the other sections of the track, I was only losing like two or three tenths to the top guys. But in, the, um, in the, the faster parts of the track with the fast corners, I was losing half a second plus. Oh, wow. So all my time loss was from the faster parts where I was struggling with the worst instability. Yeah. And like that kind of like killed the whole weekend. But I, uh, I ended up finishing not last, so that was good. I was second to last again. Uh, but I beat Luca Marini. And yeah. Marini's doing pretty good nowadays. So I just, you know, yeah. but... Uh, it, yeah, crazy, crazy experience. There's one more story I want you to tell about that that I want to move on to another topic. Okay. <laughs> it's um, the one you told me earlier about the BT Sport broadcast. 
Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I, okay, okay. I, I want people to know about this because it's too good. <laughs> yeah, so Valentino was retiring at the end of 21. Uh, yeah, at the end of 21. And so BT Sport, which is a big, a big broadcast network in the UK, decided to do this full like 45 minute story with Valentino going through his whole career and everything. And the last part of the video, it's on YouTube actually. Um, the last part of the video is they're in this, this room and there's all these plaques on the wall and it's Valentino's competitors from all the last 20 years or something. And the, the, the broadcast lady that was interviewing uh, Valentino was like, so, so there's one person on this wall that you've never beat before. And I'm watching the broadcast live because it's, a, it's a before Silverstone. So yeah. I'm like, I'm just like waiting for the race to, to come on. And, and he's like going through the board and he's like, it can't be this person, it can't be this person. Like, no, I beat him before. Like, and she said, I'll give you a hint. It was this year that, some, that you didn't, or like that somebody, that you, or you didn't beat somebody, like something like that. And then when she said that, I like leaned up off the couch and I was like, <laughs> I was like, wait a second, like, uh, because Valentino crashed in Assen. So right. I, f I finished the race, but Valentino crashed out of the race. So by and, technical and, definition. And so, so she's like, it's on this board in 21, and he's going through it, and he's like, Gerloff? Like, and, uh, and she was like, yeah, Gerloff. And I, I was like off, <laughs> off the couch thinking, what? There is no way. I'm the only rider that Valentino has never beat. I mean, full technicality. Like, full I, I, technicality, I, I was, yeah. he crashed out in front of me, like everything. Yeah. Like, I was not beating Valentino. But the fact that that's, like, on paper true is the craziest thing. And for yeah. sure, something I'm putting on my gravestone, dude. Like, 100%, <laughs> dude. You're the only rider he's never beat. Insane, insane. That is the funniest little thing to put on your resume. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> that is so funny, man. So... All these opportunities to ride GP bikes, like you're kind of swinging up in World Superbike. Your whole life has kind of led up to this, like you've been racing motorcycles. Um, and then in 2021, uh, things that got a little weird, right? Like, Definitely. What happened exactly? Yeah, so 2020 was one of the best years of my life. I get a new opportunity. I go yeah. to the World Championship. I get podiums in the World Championship, which I didn't know if I could do or not. I ride Valentino's bike like, dude, this is the best it can get. Like, just shoot me now, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and then 21 basically was the exact opposite, uh, just full downhill. Like, um, yeah, yeah it, was, it was a rough year for sure. Um, so basically like, I was kinda, I had like a lot of pressure on my shoulders. Um, I wanted to perform. Like I knew that after getting podiums the last year, it's time to go like it's time for me to be on the podium every weekend like i'm ready to do this yeah and but i had like i gave you know i put some pressure on myself to make it happen and so i wasn't riding over my head but i was pushing a lot you know and i got myself into some like hairy situations and like looking back there's also some other aspects to it like i was on the yamaha which wasn't the fastest bike and so i was having to break like as late as I could on the brakes to, to make up the time I had lost for on the straightaway. And Top Rack was doing the same thing, but Top Rack is the man. Like he is the best at braking consistently and being within the same, you know, couple inches on the track every yeah. single lap. Like, so he's, he's the man, the best. And I was not bad, but you know, if you're not consist as consistent as he is, like you can get yourself into some hairy situations. And that ended up being what happened. I, uh, I made contact with Johnny Ray in the first race and he didn't crash, but you know, I made contact and that wasn't good. And I crashed. In the next weekend in, in Portugal, I ended up, I full on lost control of the bike. Like I just, thing got out of shape in the braking zone. I ended up touching Michael Rubin, Rinaldi. Both of us crashed. And immediately like it was kind of a shit storm. Like there was just so much that was back drama. to back race. Yeah, it was back. It was back to back weekend. So it was like now the momentum's kind of building of you being like, oh, he does this. Yeah, exactly, know? exactly. It was it was like my new identity had started had already been like mostly formed. Basically, like oh, oh this guy is this guy's out of control. This guy doesn't know what he's doing. Like, and so that wasn't great for sure. Yeah. A couple weekends went by. I had some I had some some tough weekends. I was riding really well and I was going fast and I was within like I was in the top five and stuff but I like in a couple races I crashed out of qualifying didn't set a time started from the back had to go from last place to the top five wow. which was good like I was riding I felt like I was riding really good but there was just like just all this stuff happening and it was it was just like oh it was just one negative thing after the next negative thing and it was just like building and building 
And then the same thing happened at Aston in 2021. I crashed out of qualifying, qualified last. So the first day had to start from last, I got fifth. The next day had to start from last, got eighth in the Super Bowl race, which made me start in eighth place for the second race. Nice, that's good. And I had been like one of the top two fastest guys all weekend and was like, this, this is, my time to make it happen like it's the last race of the weekend make it happen you stupid idiot like come on you know yeah and i got one of the best starts of my entire life dude i went from eighth place to basically right behind top rack in first place uh within the first i don't know like 75 meters or something wow. like I, I blew past the like i i thought i almost jumped the start it was so good but i didn't and anyway, we're, we're, we go to break for turn one. And again, Top Rack's one of the best breakers in World Superbike. Like I'm sure you guys have seen him just on the front wheel. Like he, he's super impressive to watch. He stops better than anybody, including myself. <laughs> and so I went to break with him. I broke at the same time as him, but he can just stop the bike so well. And I end up like basically meeting him as he's turning in the bike yeah and we we make the slightest contact dude like it's on youtube you can you guys can go watch it but i make the slightest contact i feel like a bit of pressure on my leg and then i feel that pressure disappear and like i look over my shoulder and he's going off in the gravel and he's leading the championship at this point yeah and it's one of the first times in like since ben speeds that yamaha's led the championship so right away that's yeah. Like one of the worst things that can happen is because he was only leading by a little bit. And him the worst going, part was it wasn't even like you know Johnny touched him or Ducati touched him. It was, it was Yamaha. yeah, no the Yamaha, like, yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, like you yeah. know, and and I wasn't any. I was in like sixth place or fifth place in the championship, so I had like you know, I had no right to be there but like yeah. again i wasn't trying to pass him it was just that he broke so efficiently and so well i just couldn't make it happen i couldn't yeah. stop in that short of a time frame and i i just ended up running out of real estate basically and i like full on was just what is happening yeah. like dude what is happening i am not this rider i don't know why this keeps happening i just was like fully spun out and yeah anyway like so yeah i was just like probably one of the worst moments in 21. There was a couple other ones that were pretty bad, but that was one of the worst moments in 21. And I it gave me P PTSD for a little bit, <laughs> you know, like sure, yeah. also I had was like getting threatened by um, Dorna because uh, rightly so, you know, like, I mean, I, I had taken three people out. And so it yeah. was, uh, they had to do something. They had to say something like, you know, that this cannot happen again, basically is what they were telling yeah. me, you know, like we're going to have to do something serious if it happens again. So I just felt handcuffed, you know, like how am I supposed to, ride what at, sort the, of at the limit could they have taken on, on like because you, you there was see, nothing ever said but yeah. like let's just say like man I, if, if i'm putting people in danger i can't be out there yeah pretty much like and it's, especially since there was like so many incidents that happened in such a short amount of time yeah man it just it, it was what it was and like i i understood that like it wasn't like i was like this isn't fair so like, they're basically no. like clean up your act like yeah yeah stop. yeah i mean rightly so and so um so did so, you so, feel yeah. at that moment that you were like you know because you said earlier in the season you're like you know not riding outside of your head but like pushing you know yeah, and then yeah. at that point you're like you know maybe not going to 100 percent, maybe like 95 you, you just had oh, to no, leave not a even little that bit. dude i was going like 80 percent because i just didn't want to be in this, dude, to i did again, not want to be in the same situation like and and i just i hated that that was the reputation that i had at that point For sure like, dude I, I hated that i wasn't that guy and like, yeah. it was hard to even look in the mirror because i was that guy you know what i mean like the whole world was telling me you are that guy yeah. own it you know and and i just hard to look in the mirror and be like no that's not that's not me like i don't do that like i'm yeah. i'm a good rider man and so yeah it was tough and I, it was just hard like you know the, online it's good science being online and stuff like the internet's great but at the same time it brings out the worst in people i think you yeah. know and it's like everybody's opinions that they wish they could say out loud to your face they end up saying online and yeah it just sucks getting a lot of hate mail and stuff and you know it's like it's like man you guys don't understand and, and you, all you want to do is make them understand yeah. but you just know that that's never gonna that's never gonna be a game you're gonna win you know yeah. and just like you just gotta let it go and, and try to move on and and that's what i've done like i'm, I'm in a like a really good place now for sure so yeah. this is definitely like in the past and what not but yeah it was something that definitely defines that moment in my career and something that um you know yeah something to, to point out i guess yeah so i guess did, did that kind of start the relationship with yamaha kind of like strained a little bit with those kind of things somewhat yeah somewhat um like i still man dude i i'm so happy that i rode for yamaha so happy that they gave me the opportunity to come to world superbike yeah. i got no bad blood you know yeah. against them or anything like that so it's all love from from this side 
But there were some things that uh, like contractually, I was supposed to have the same bike as Top Rack, which I found out wasn't the case in 2022. And, you know, I'm not saying that was the case before that, but, you know, it was just like, just like, what the heck, you know, like, um, and anyway, I was struggling in 2022 in general. And like, I could have gone faster than I was regardless, but you know, it was just things like that. That was just kind of, yeah, it's a bummer. Yeah. But you're in a good place now, you said. I am right? in a good place now. Yeah, yeah, I'm freaking, dude, I'm so, I'm happy as can be with, uh, with the team that I have now with Bonovo Action. Like, I love all the guys on my team. They're super, like, they're just, they're fun to be around. They love two wheels. They love racing. They're passionate about it. And, and they want to be there, you know? Yeah. And that's just, like, the best energy. Like, it's, it's awesome to, and also, they have no expectation, which is really cool. Like, I didn't know what that was like, but to, to literally for them to be happy that I came in eighth place is something I've never experienced before. Cause like, I'm not even happy. I'm like almost mad. Like, dude, can you guys like, can <laughs> you guys get bit, mad with me? Like yeah. the eighth place sucks, dude. Like, well, I don't want to be an eighth, you know, but it's just cool. They're just, they're happy that, um, that I'm giving it my all, you know, yeah. and, and they have reasonable expectations for what the, what, you know, the bike's capable of and, and everything. Yeah. And so that's been like just super, super refreshing for sure. That's awesome. Yeah, man. Yeah. I'm happy. <laughs> so uh, I guess the trajectory now is your Bonovo BMW, uh, Toprak is coming to BMW, yeah. which is cool as a factory yeah, rider. Yeah, for sure. Do you see yourself going factory BMW or like where, where do you kind of like, you know, where do you see it going from here, I guess? Yeah, man, uh, it's super cool that Top Rack's coming. So I guess I should like also say, I was friends with Top Rack before everything happened and I've continued to be friends with Top Rack after it. Cool. Like, man, he was the most gracious guy ever, was, uh, was super like, dude, I was not happy in the moment for sure. I was very mad, but like, I forgive you. Like things happen, this is racing. Like, dude, I don't hold anything against you. And like, that was the coolest thing he could have ever done. Yeah. And so um, anyway, like, so I've, you know, I've definitely had a good relationship with him since then. And w when I saw that he signed, I had no idea. Like it, this, it came out, I saw on Instagram that dude, Top Rack, nowhere, yeah. yeah, yeah, Top Rack is coming to BMW. And I was thinking like, whoa, what, what the heck? Like, where did that come from? And I'm super excited to see like what he's gonna say about the program and the bike and everything for sure. But as far as like what I wanna do, I'm really happy with Bonovo, like really, really happy for sure. But also in the, in the back of my mind, which, which is nothing to do with Bonovo or anything. In the back of my mind, I've always wanted to be a factory rider and Bonovo technically on paper is a satellite team. Right. And I would just love to be on a factory team. It, it is crazy the amount of coverage difference that you get being on a, being a factory rider versus being a satellite rider. Night and day, man. Like if, um, cause Dorna has to cover the manufacturers and their factory teams. So for all the press releases and stuff, they focus on the factory riders and the factory teams. And then all the satellite guys, they're just kind of, you know, they're just left aside. And so it would be, it would be cool to, to uh, be on the factory team just for some more recognition, I guess, in a, in a way, which yeah. is like, it's kind of selfish and like, it sounds like a weird way to, to say it, but you know, it, it also you get like slightly more support and you know, I don't know, it's just, it would yeah. be cool. It's just something like, I have to have a goal, man. And so like my goal is to be on a factory team and what would be really sick is if Bonovo was a factory team and it was just like, bam, all right, here yeah. we are. We're like, nothing changes, we're, we're like, going forward but yeah uh, yeah anyway I'll say again I'm very happy with with what's going on right now so yeah. I'm just gonna focus on the next round <laughs> let me ask you this because um, you rode a GP bike a few times was yeah. there ever any inklings that you would be in GP or anything like that yeah that was 100% my goal man like when I was racing in 600s in Moto America I wanted to be on a GP bike yeah. that was my goal that was the reason why I came to Superbike in the first place was because I thought it might be the best path for me to get to Moto GP yeah so after the stuff with Top Rack, after me not having the best weekend at Assen where I finished second to last, that, that opportunity pretty much like faded. And yeah, it's a bummer, like, cause that's what I always dreamed of doing. And I mean, never say never, I guess, but yeah. you know, I've kind of accepted that that ship has sailed. And my new goal now is like, I just want to be the best that I can be in Superbike and try to get on a factory team pretty much like that. That's what I think would be super, super cool, man. And you know, I, I it's just my goal at the moment. I'm, I'm like, I update it as I go, but that's the goal at the moment. Cool.
I think that's a good goal. Yeah, I think that's cool. You gotta have goals in life, man. Otherwise, yeah. you're just what are you doing? What are you're you pointing around, at, man? Yeah. You're just floating. You're in limbo. Like you know, I, I gotta have something to 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 point towards. So, but yeah. I I wanna I wanna get on another. I wanna get a podium too. Like damn it, man. That would be. Oh, sick. I'm so far away right now. And Bautista's smoking all of us. Like dude, yeah. oh. <laughs> dude, all right, we gotta figure something out. Yeah. <laughs> More horsepower. There you go. I, uh, How, you, were uh, me that, you were telling me that bike, that BMW, is making 280 horsepower, thereabouts? I don't know the official number, okay, but, but I, I feel like... It feels freaking fast. And, like, all the super bikes now have a ton of horsepower. Yeah. And, like, you hear, you hear, like, inklings of, like, okay, the Yamaha might have this and the Honda might have this. Right. I heard that number not from BMW. I heard that number from a rumor in the paddock. So I, I have no idea to be honest, but yeah. it feels freaking fast and uh, the electronics are having to work overtime to keep all that in check, which they do. But you know, can it's like, you don't want to be always like fighting against each other. So the electronics are fighting against the power and the power is fighting against the electronics and it's like this tug of war, you know? Yeah. And I'm just sitting on, I'm sitting in the middle, like just trying to, <laughs> trying to ride the bike. <laughs> So it can be kind of tough. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, let's change gears a little bit. Let's move away from uh, you know World Superbike Professional Motorcycle Racing. Yeah, okay. We're yeah, gonna yeah. bring it back down to earth for us mere mortals doing club <laughs> racing and goofing around. Um, for the average club racer slash track day enthusiast, you as a professional rider, what do you think people don't focus on that they maybe should, or what should they focus on the most when it comes to riding okay. a motorcycle fast on track? Mm. This is a good question. This is a question I wasn't expecting. So, all right, let me, let me think for a second. Sure. I would say um, focus on yourself before the bike to a, to a certain extent. Like, I, there's a, um, I mean, bro, I love shiny stuff. I like new parts. Like, it's, it's always tempting to just be like, I'm not fast because of X. Right. Not the case, man. I mean, okay, somewhat it can be once you get to like that, those last like, you know, ints of a second or whatever. But like focus on your riding and stuff. Cause I, I mean, I feel like, I feel like I can take one of like the 400 over there. And I feel like I can go pretty fast on it because I, I've been trying to work on my technique for so long. And yeah. I've been trying to dial in my feeling with everything with the bike, like, and all that stuff. And so, but that's comes from just intentional practice on like, what's my body position like? What, like, what does my brake pressure trace look like? You know, am I doing all my braking straight up and down immediately as soon as I close the gas? Or am I, am I coasting a little bit and then grabbing the brake? And am I grabbing the brake soft and then having a spike? And then like all these small things, man, like it's you all, it's all details. Too. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for That's sure. Crazy. I mean, like, I don't want, I don't want to coast at all. I want to be full throttle, straight to full brake pressure, rear wheel off the ground, like, yeah. you know, and um, and be on the perfect line. Like, man, lines can make a huge difference in lap time. Like, if yeah. you if you got bad lines versus good lines, for me, like, I seconds worth. Like, if if you're on like a long track, and you know, if you're on like a really bad line versus a really good line, seconds easily. Yeah. So, I mean, it's all that stuff like that. Focus on focus on the details, like. It's easy to go straight to like, this is the magic bullet. Focus on the details, man. And that's what I'm trying to do right now with the BMW because the BMW is a good bike. And I feel like everybody's looking for that magic bullet to be like, why are we not winning? It has to be some grand reason. Let's focus on this and this and this and this and this and try to just, yeah. you know, let's not miss anything. So that's anyway. interesting. So you think like just yeah focus on those fundamentals just yeah obviously not it's, getting it's a get boring answer I, it's a boring answer I know it's a boring answer but I'm telling you it will make the biggest difference if you just focus on like find have somebody have your girlfriend have your friend whatever video you as you ride you know put a GoPro on yourself like like try to get as many visuals as you can to be able to compare it to guys like Mark Marquez or whatever in, in MotoGP or like Bautista or whatever in Superbike like have those references, see what they're doing with their body position, try to see where they grab the brakes, how long they hold the brakes into the corner, the yeah. lines that they take through the corner, um, where they pick up the gas, how they slide the bike, you know, like there's so many things that you can, you can try to look for, for yeah. sure. It's interesting, I did the, the Yamaha Champ School racers only a little weekend, and um, one of the coolest things that they did is they, they have the guys follow you with the camera and, they, and yeah. you get to see a whole lap of yourself on track. And one thing I found was like, I don't use nearly enough of the racetrack. Like I'm just leaving pavement that I mm. could be using to go faster. Yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah. And then I, I went back to my local tracks and I, I started thinking about it. I was like, 
I can find so much time just by using the whole track, you know? For sure. And if you had like a GPS that you could put on the bike that like showed your speed, you'd be surprised the difference in speed from, from going another two feet wider on an exit, yeah. you know, and being able to have the bike just that much more upright. Yeah. Like, cause then you're not fighting electronics as much if you have a bike with electronics or if you don't, you're able to just have more grip. And sure. so like, there's a lot, a lot of things that you could really try to like focus on for sure. Yeah. And you focus on them one at a time, right? Like, yeah, I yeah. Guess if, if, depending on where the person is on their experience level, right? For sure, for sure. I mean, there's uh, if there's something like blatantly off, like, yeah. all right, let's do that first. But if if it's like everything looks pretty good, let's just slowly try to like focus on one thing at a time. Like, yeah. like you're breaking, you're breaking good, but you're not breaking hard enough initially. Like, you need to you need to be on the freaking brakes as soon as you're off the gas. Like, yeah. you know, like it's it's and then then you work on that for weeks <laughs> you know like <laughs> um but but then you it makes a difference man it does it does yeah. i think that's the thing that a lot of people don't think about too is the amount of practice and intentional practice that it takes to get so good yeah like you guys in super it's, it's like 100 percent. it's intentional practice it's not just practice because there's a it's so easy to just be out there and just be like all right i need to be Spending i laps. need to be doing laps like you know and there needs to be a reason why you're doing the laps and so it's got you got to have something to focus on something to be intentional about yeah yeah, like you said, you know, looking good. You saw me on that scooter today. Yeah, bro. Just oh, man. <laughs> I think the thing is a bit more preload or a bit more damping in the rear because it was dancing around a little bit. I was slightly nervous a couple of times. Like that, and that rear stand gets close to the ground, man. I had, oh, no, yeah. I had no idea. <laughs> I'm going to be more careful from now on, like for yeah. sure, because I, I might rip that thing a bit too fast after, after watching you rip it fast. <laughs> That's what it's built for, man. That's yeah. what it's built for. <laughs> Gary, anything else you want to talk about, man? Uh, I mean, I guess I'll, I'll just like, uh, I guess I'll just say this, like for, for the end, like, man, for, for anybody out there, like, dude, keep grinding, like, keep going. Do not, like, don't get discouraged so much that you give up something. Like, if you really believe in something, if you have a dream, if you have a passion for something and, and you think that you can, that you can make it happen, like, dude, put everything toward it. I mean, cause I, I look back and, how my life has gone and the place the where i started back when i first started road racing when i was 12. i mean dude you would have never thought that i would ever end up where i was and there were so many fast kids that were really so much better than me dude like i sucked when i first started really? i was so bad but i loved it and i wanted to get better at it and so for, i put my head down and i tried to like figure out why i was so slow just yeah all i gotta say is man you never know where you can end up if you don't if you don't one go for it and just try i mean and by doing that like dude i've lived the craziest adventure of all like i i'm super happy with the story that i can tell my kids one day because yeah. like i've had a crazy life you know <laughs> and uh but like i'm happy that my parents instilled in me that like not to be scared to take chances and just to know that no matter what like there's going to be a reason for everything that you might not know right away but down the road like you will like realize like all right this happened to me because i needed to know this for this reason like for sure so anyway yeah i just want to encourage everybody out there like dude if you got something to go for freaking go for it like <laughs> dude come on you guys got this let's go i love it i love it garrett i also anyway. love the way you said about when you started you weren't the fastest or the most gifted because i think a lot of people no. with motorcycle <laughs> racing it's like you expect the super fast guys they jump on the bike and it's like boom they're already fast you know and that can happen sometimes but yeah i think the persistence and determination and practice is what separates truly the people that are like insanely good and those that are like oh they're good but they never lived up to their potential yeah you know? and, and man dude the difficult times define you like if if uh it, it, it all it is is showing you like man how bad do you really want this like do you really want it or do you just say you want it like yeah. that's what the bad times are for yeah. and also like man if things aren't going your way like it's just that it should be motivation to to dive deeper into what's going on yeah like what's going on why is it not working and like what am i missing yeah it's like i was telling you you know i've had some some not so great times doing this whole thing and yeah yeah, yeah. If, if i had decided to quit at that moment like i would have never seen this real life know. this level you know yeah. and you wouldn't have either you exactly know? i wouldn't be here right now yeah. like that's what's crazy like every decision we make in life has a bigger impact than you think yeah so think about every decision that you make make sure it's intentional make sure you think it through and you'll be surprised like where you might end up in in life you know yeah. like it's it's there's a lot of a lot of 
two-way directions, you know? And once, uh -huh. it might just be this right now, but that expands into infinity, like as, as you go on <laughs> through time. So be intentional about every decision you make, for sure. I love that, I love that. Uh, last question for you, and maybe this is gonna spawn more questions, I'm not sure. But <laughs> you were telling me earlier today that you're a like you're a street guy, you know, like you're you're two wheels, like, and I love that because I am too. Like anything yeah, two yeah. wheels, like I just love. Um, not assuming the BMW gun to your head, what street bike do you get? Oh man, it's you're, not a scooter. Is it a scooter? You're killing me. Um, like in general, you're talking about like yeah, uh, like what, like you, like you what you kind see? of motorcycle? Like no, adventure like bike? A like a specific model. I want you to tell me like mm. if you had to get one single street bike forever, what would you do? What would you get? I'd have to be a bike that did it all. Okay, uh, it's my only bike, so it's got to be something that can do it all. Okay. I'm an, I'm like I said, I'm an adventurous guy. Like dude, I like uh -huh. going to, and exploring off like in the dirt, like on in the mountains and stuff, or trying to go fast on on the road. You're gonna get an ADV, aren't you? It's, I'm an ADV guy, man. Like, I got the touring jacket. You already <laughs> yeah, seen the touring to jacket, go, yeah. so I mean, like, probably GS 1250. GS 1250. And I know, I know that I am a BMW rider. Like, it might be biased slightly, but I have always like really liked those bikes. And okay. dude, they they kind of rip. Like, no, they, you, you, yeah. you, I've seen guys dragging the. Uh, Hard cases, yeah. The, the cases like on the side and stuff, you know, on asphalt. And then there's the adventure rides and stuff that they do. Like BMW, they have a, crazy. Um, like every four years, they do this big like it's GS the trophy. trophy. The yeah. Trophy thing, yeah. And the stuff that I see people do on those bikes, there's like 600 pounds. Like they're not small, but yeah. the stuff they do is insane. And so anyway, yeah. BMW GS. Okay. Next question then, because I'm right. not going to let you weasel out of this. All right, all right. You have to build a three bike stable. Okay, okay. <laughs> three bikes, okay? You can make them do whatever you want. You have three motorcycles in your garage to satisfy all your two-wheel desires. All right. What three bikes are you getting? Well, you know I got one. I got the scooter you over got there. The I got to have okay. one scooter, all right, man. You got the scooter. I, dude, I'm, I'm okay. a scooter guy, scooter gang, dude. Scooter. Hashtag scooter gang. <laughs> so I got to have one scooter. Um, I would say... Dude, one of my favorite bikes of all time was this 2006 RS125 that I that I raced nice. when I was uh, when I was a kid. Okay. Dude, one of the the sweetest like nicest bikes ever. Just yeah. that two stroke, you know, just yeah. rev to like 15,000 RPM. The like the sound, everything like ah. Oh. I'd have to have one of those for sure. That's like what? a track toy type of thing. Yeah, like a, like a track toy kind of thing. Oh yeah, oh so you're saying street bikes? Oh, just any three bikes. Yeah, okay, okay. Any three all bikes. right, RS125. And then Oh man. If you say GS, I'm gonna hurt you, Garrett. No, I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say GS. I'm not gonna say GS. <laughs> There's so many bikes out there nowadays, like there dude. Are. Mm. Did you really you're you're killing me right now? Cause I wouldn't want it to do everything. Mm -hmm. If it was if I had three bikes, you know what I mean? Mm hmm But I, like if I'm riding on the street, I don't really want it to be like a I don't want it to be a like a race bike. Yeah. I don't want it to be like a M1000 RR or something like that for like riding around on the street. Did you get a naked bike? No, nah, I'm not a big naked bike mm -hmm. fan, okay. to be honest. Help me out. Give me some give me some cuz like there, I, there's so many mm -hmm. bikes like going through my mind. I can't even like yeah. make I can't even stop the carousel. Dude, Turbo Hayabusa. No, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, definitely not. Definitely Dude, I not. wish mine wasn't blown up so you could have ridden it. Well, I mean, you put enough uh, starter fluid and stuff in there, I'm sure it'll still crank over. It crank. <laughs> when, the, when the battery wasn't dead, you would try to turn on, it would just go. It wouldn't even, it wouldn't even crank. Oh, it, oh, it was like, something's really. Oh, it's locked it's up. Locked, like, yeah. Oh, okay. So, All right, geez. We'll figure it out later. Um, I mean, dude, you know what? Okay, you know what I like are dual sports. Good like choice. I like dual sports, so the yeah. RZ four hundred, something like that. Yeah, uh, I think Honda they have like a four fifty L the, or something. Yeah, the 450. But it's like a four fifty motocross bike, but uh -huh. for the road. Like okay. those, those you could get pretty rowdy on something like that. All so right. I might, I might go with like a like a full on lightweight dual sport bike. This feels that feels like a very enlightened three bike. It's table. a it's a random three bikes, like dude. Scooter, like a, a scooter because that RS, handles all my my car stuff and like yeah. all my street stuff. Handle everything. The RS one twenty five. Freaking sickest bike on track, yeah, like just bike. flick, flick around, whatever, yeah. and then like a dual sport where you could take it across yeah. like Africa, basically, Bop and like you, want, you know, lightweight travel, and yeah. stuff. All right, there we go. Sweet. Are you happy with that? I like it. That's <laughs> yeah, a good okay, choice. Right. Yeah. I like it. Random for sure. Very random. Um, Garrett, I think that's all the questions I had for you, man. I appreciate it. All yeah. right, all right. Well, Thanks yeah, again, time. man, dude, I had fun. This is uh, this is a cool day. So awesome. You got to come to a race. 
I want to, really bad. Come you to guys race, don't man. come to America anymore. What? You, what, you say you're, uh, you're from Brazil or whatever? Like, I know you know how, what planes are. <laughs> like, <dude. laughs> Bro, get over to Europe, come on, man. Uh, we got a race in Portugal coming up. Do you speak Portuguese? Could be good, could be good. So what, it's Donington next. Donington, Imola. Next yeah, Donington next weekend. Yeah, Portugal is one of the last races, so you even got time to set up the flight and everything. So anyway, just just saying, just saying, throwing it out there. Maybe, maybe. All right. Can I can I get in the box with you? Can yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Sweet. Hundred percent. Yeah, Sweet. dude, I'm not gonna send you to the stands. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, bro. Oh yeah. All right, I'll hold you to that. All right, all right. Do that. There we go. Cool. Only one thing to say to you today. While we sit here taking a knee. It's a special moment, me and you hanging out here. Do it. I don't even got to tell you what to do. You already know what to do. You've made it to the end of the video. You got the time. I know you're sitting there. You want to make sure that you can keep watching yourself some Miami Noob. So what you want to do, just click that video right over here. Do it.